Time's Times Online, RugbyPass.com. Chris Jones is with us, as always. Another round of Six Nations Rugby and France. Getting there against Scotland today, Chris, but a combative game. They snuck a try late to inflate the scoreline. So the three out of three, I mean, and, and it is about winning these matches. What are we learning about them? We're learning that they're not as good as they were last year, you know, basically. And also, if they keep on picking this bloke, Mohamed Haus, they're just going to be playing with 14 men uh, every time they take the pitch. I mean, he was sent off for rearranging a, uh, Richie's nose last time he played Scotland. And this time, he headbutts White the scrum half and gets off, just as, just as France are preparing to really turn the screw against the Scotland team that had Grant Gilchrist sent off uh, a little bit earlier. So it was just, you know, it, 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 it damaged the game. But, you know, France, they found a way of winning in the end. And you know, if, you're, if you're a good team, you do that. But I tell you what, Scotland, after being 19 nil down, to do what they did to come back and force France to, to, to wait until the final moments to get their bonus point try, that was a great effort. You know? But still, France are only fourth on the table. There are three teams on 10 points. Scotland, England and France. And of course, they're five points behind the Irish. You know, it's a French side that's, that isn't playing as well as what, you know, we think that they are capable of. So what does this actually tell? Look, I mean, what is has their bubble burst? Are, are teams catching them up or are they holding something back? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, they are holding something back, and uh, you know the World Cup is so massive. It's, it's can they handle the pressure? You know they were they started like a train against Scotland today. They uh, they they got onto the score, but I say 19 nil up. Any French team in Paris, 19 nil up, you, you're going to be going. This is fantastic. Let's let's just keep this, the cricket scoreboard going. But no, Scotland are a different beast, and they exposed the French uh, midfield. Uh, they they moved the ball really quickly. Finn Russell, okay, gave away an inter- interception try. But he also caused them numerous problems. And Sean Edges will not be happy with that because although his defence around you know, the breakdown and, and, and other areas were solid, his backs were, were torn to shreds at times. And that will offer teams you know, you know, like the New Zealand will look at that and say, well, hey, you know, they're not as fantastic as we thought they were. And you know, that, that's good for the World Cup because, you know, quite honestly, they look to be on a pedestal at the end of last Six Nations, you know, we thought, you know, this is an unbelievable French side. But you know what? Sometimes they have feet of clay. And both red cards deserve. You said that, uh, the, you know, the French one was. I mean, as soon as there's a red card in a game of Test Rugby, everyone groans. But these two were actually deserved red cards, dumb red cards. Oh, the, the prop is completely dumb. Gilchrist got his height wrong, shoulder it's 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 a head of uh, Giroc and you know he had his arm tucked. There's there's yeah when a player is going to learn, you know unless they change the way that they're tackling in certain situations, they're going to get red cards. If this is a World Cup final and you're playing that French prop, you've got a great chance uh, uh, yeah, uh, of going for, for the majority of the game with 14 players. These guys quite honestly have to be kicked out of the game like him. Gilchrist, different kettle of fish, but still a red card. And, you know, and the way that the three officials work together, along with the TMO, they came to the right decisions. And that's great to see. It took ages. But, yeah, Marty, they all take ages. When is Rugby League going to learn, mate? Because if that challenge, if that shoulder to the head, it was Rugby League, you just get put on report. You might get a yellow card. You'd be back playing again. When is that game going to catch up with the rest of the world? It is ridiculous, isn't it? I mean, Rugby League uh, has given us loads of defence coaches, and they do like you know, a low shot and a high shot. Well, yeah, if that ball carrier just dips slightly, that high shot is going to get you into the uh, into the sheds for a red card. It's it's something that, you know, they've got to start looking at and, and get away from this rugby league influence. You know, there are really good tacklers in rugby and they usually hit along the thighs or the ankles and people come crashing to earth very safely and and, and sets up the opportunity for a turnover. You don't need to be making these these huge hits, which if you, they're, they're macho hits, aren't they? They're just, they, they claim they're trying to dislodge the ball. Sorry, the ball is actually below where you're hitting, mate. It's just ridiculous that people are still putting themselves in the position where they could be, they could be red carded by, by going too high and with a tucked arm. Chris, Scotland, finally, before we get on to Wales, England, a real dogfight, that one. Chris Jones out of the UK with us, Six Nations Rugby, we're talking. Is this Scot- Scottish side, is it, could this be, you know, the, the, the Japan at perhaps the last couple of World Cups or 
or maybe Ireland at the one before. They're just capable of causing an upset. Are they the team or the Argentina, are they, of this year's World Cup? Well, 2007, Argentina were absolutely brilliant, uh, and, and they tore teams apart. Scotland have that ability. When Finn Russell is on, he is quite electric at the moment, and Hugh Jones today played a brilliant game in the midfield. They have got lots and lots of backs. They didn't have to rely just on Duan van der Meer at this time. They made a couple of serious errors where they could have had more tries, and you know, they could have snuck the win. And we'd be talking about you know, an incredible victory by Scotland, but they just don't have that clinical edge which is something that Ireland, above anybody else in the Northern Hemisphere at the moment, they have that clinical edge. Let's park them, because they were the first game, obviously. Wales versus England. The non-striking miners grubbing it out against the Poms. Two very average sides, Chris. Let me just say that. I mean, I, I'm looking at the English. Um, they haven't improved it all under Borthwick. The, the, you know, the great redeemer, Warren Gatland, isn't the great redeemer at the moment. They just look like two kind of average teams. Wales are in a terrible place. Yeah, zero points. Yeah, they are rooted at the bottom of the table, and I expect them to be there by the end of this championship. They go to Italy next. The last, last season, as you remember, Italy won 22-21 in Cardiff. They pushed Ireland really hard. They are running it from everywhere. And Wales, by relying on the old lags like Alan Wynne-Jones and Falatau and Tipperick, are going to get run off the Stadio Olimpico at this rate. OK, they've got some young centres who've got you know, lots of promise in this Welsh team. But I do not know what Gatlin's doing with selection because, you know, one week he, he throws the old lags out and brings youngsters in. They play England. They go back to the, to the old way of playing. It's slow. It's boring. And there was no threat in the Welsh back line, which is, is a terrible indictment on any coach that a, that a country that just produces great backs showed nothing except one interception try from Rhys Abbott. And that took England to give him the ball. Well, they go to Italy next, as you say. That loss, plus the Georgia loss, plus, I suppose, you know, blowing it against Australia. But certainly that Italy loss, you know, set the ball rolling for Pivak to lose his job. It's not going to happen to Gatlin, is he? But he hasn't improved this team one iota. No, you know, and that was England's first win in, in, in Wales for six years. And, and people, people in Wales are getting fed up with these records being created against, uh, against the Welsh at the moment. And, you yeah, know, you'd have to say... You know, that Italy start favourites. What a wow. terrible indictment that wow. is of Welsh, of Welsh wow. rugby, that Italy are the favourites. It's just, it beggars belief, you know. Whatever Gatlin thought he was taking on, it's far, far worse than he could have ever envisaged. And how much of this is, you know, or the influence of the, the strike and all the off-field stuff, I mean, how much is that sapping this team? For this match, it, it was a big problem, obviously now, but They've now run out of excuse, excuses, Marley. If they go to Italy and lose, there'll be no strike. They'll have perfect preparation. If they lose this one, they have nowhere to go. They've just got laid bare as, as an absolutely average team in a, in, in a Northern Hemisphere season, which is seeing some fantastic rugby, none of which is being played by Wales. Chris Jones with us. We're talking Six Nations. Ireland taking care of business, 34-20. I mean, that was comfortable. They could have won this with a B-side, couldn't they? I mean, I don't know what their B-side is because they look to me as though they can actually interchange just about every single position on the field at the moment. They're that good. Yeah, well, no Sexton, no problem. I mean, they, they're three from three. They scored more points than anybody else. They conceded fewer than any, than any other team. And, you know, that they, they, they've scored 13 tries more than anybody. They are just a unit that is confident in their in themselves. They're confident that even if Sex and a few of the other major guys, remember, people like Furlong are not here. Yeah, They're missing probably, you could say, four or five what you'd call great starters. Ring Rose pulled out before the game. It didn't matter. They still took care of a, an Italian team that really came at them. And yeah, the Italians picked off a, a, a ball for an intercept. So again, the scoreline was massaged slightly. But you know, don't get away from the fact the Irish had to work quite hard for this even with Lowe dropping the ball over the line. you know, They kept coming at you, and they come at you in very, very uh, clever ways, intricate patterns, but boy, are they confident. And you know, they just seem to be cutting a swathe through the Northern Hemisphere at the moment, and uh, they will go into the World Cup as favourites because we didn't think they could sustain this, and unlike the French, they have sustained it. Finally, Super Rugby kicked off this weekend. Much noise about that up your place. Has it? 
Of course, ah. of course, we're of course we're interested, mate. We we always love a yeah, I love a bit of the the basketball stuff. You know, loads of high scores. You know, no defense. Who gives it? But good to see that you know Tom Line has been given the chance of the Queens and Reds. Yeah, you know, they talked him up after the game. His team got absolutely hammered. Yeah, you know? we're looking for quality. Well, I, the one thing we do like up here is the fact that the Fijian team has got a really good win against Pacifica. That's really good to see because we know. That means that the Fiji team, now under Simon Raiolui, could actually do something at this World Cup if they're getting players coming out of Super Rugby. Look, there's, there's some great results. And, and I know that, that all the supporters of Scott Robertson now have stopped crying and convinced themselves that wasn't a massive hammering at home. 